Ricky, as you might imagine, a whole bunch of questions coming in, not least on boxing, many of them on your beloved Manchester City. Oh, yeah, Jim, yeah. there's Andy, big Manchester City fan. Jim, I ask uh, Ricky where he was when City played the final against Inter Milan in Istanbul. Was he there? Did he watch it? If so, where did he watch it? Uh, I went, yeah, I went with um, with four or five of my friends. And um, well, you went to the final. yeah, yeah. I went to. I've been a busy chappy watching City lately. I went to, uh, I went to Real Madrid um, to watch City away there. You know, in the in the, in the semi final. Then I went to Wembley when we won the FA Cup against Manchester United. And then it was the two weeks after. Then it was Istanbul. Then it was Istanbul. So. Uh, it's brilliant. I mean, it's the first time we've done it, and I'm very proud to say I was I was there for you know for 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 all of them. To be honest with you, I mean, it's what we did this this year. You know, I mean, I think I think even Man United fans have just got to sit back and go, you know, fair play to you. You know, what I mean, it was brilliant. But yeah, sure, it was it was great. It was hard work, Istanbul. Though I think the um, I think people agree with me. If you did go there, it was a nightmare getting to and from the to and from the ground. This the is tra- what we had. Yeah, and, we had many stories of it was it was absolutely horrific. And I tell you what, if we <laughs> That trip, that the trip home. If we'd have, if we'd have lost, oh my, that have felt like that have felt like doing twenty rounds with Manny Pacquiao. If if we'd have lost and had to try and get old, it's just, just, just the format of where it was situated, the ground. You know, we went in the city centre for you know for for a few drinks, and they mm. turned around and said, oh, it's two and a half hours away from here. I went, you're joking. Yeah, you know, it was just just to get it was to a long and from way the, the city. Well, yeah. We were leaning on UEFA about yeah. that. You whoever, still haven't got answers to those questions. Yeah. Whoever, whoever, whoever decided to have it there, we you know one one one. Once the red yeah, shake, it was, insane, the red shake, wasn't it? It was bad. Yeah. And now we hear this morning that it's being reported West Ham rejected ninety million pound uh, bid from City for Declan Rice. So, are you happy that they're in there bidding that they want him? Absolutely. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, you know, every, never mind City. Every team, you know, what do they do? What you do every year? You've got to improve your squad. You know, and if City have you know set the set the bar, aren't they? And that they've got to continue to. You know to improve it, you know, and um, it seems funny that City have put a bid in. You know, normally they don't put a bid in to, for someone unless they know they're definitely going to get them. You know what I mean? Or someone wants to come to the club because I, I think um, if you listen to the stories, he's, he wants to go to Arsenal. He's favouring, favouring. He wants wants to go to Arsenal. So the fact that City have put a bid in, yeah, um, is a bit of a strange one for City. But yeah, would have him. He, you know, youngster's got plenty of years of you know improvement and plenty of years of football in him. Sure, he seems. Um, Pep seems to be getting the players in building for the future, doesn't he? You know what I mean? Of course. Ricky, we know uh, you are a prominent ambassador of a, a bunch of mental health uh, charities, including CAM. CAM is a campaign against living miserably. Um, how did you get involved in this? Because for those who don't know, life hasn't been a bowl of roses for Ricky Hatton mm. uh, f- for forever and a day because you hit some very low spots, didn't you? Very much so, yeah. And... Um... And the reason why I'm doing so much for these mental health, um, you know, and anti-suicide, you know, charities is is because of um, the stuff I'm experiencing now. You know, being a being a grandfather, you know, seeing Campbell turn professional. You know what I mean? I fell out with Billy Graham a few years ago. I made up with Billy Graham. You know, and and then nearly, I nearly took my own life. I didn't, you know, didn't want to. I didn't want to be here. You know, and. The stuff, the life that Ricky Atten is having today, and the stuff that I'm enjoying today, you know what I mean. I, I know there's, I know there's people out there, you know, that are in the same boat that that I was in, and I want to be able to to help them. And if you know, if they listen, if they're more likely to listen to Ricky Atten, then I'm doing a, I'm doing a, you know, a, a good job to be to to be honest with you. Because I mean, we've had a terrible time. We've just come out of the COVID company where we've been locked in our, you know. We've been locked in our houses, won't we? You know, you know, away from our family, our friends, and our loved ones. And then the minute we get back out, the cost of living's happened. You know, so mental health, I think, for that for a reason, is certainly part of it. As you know, people's heads are falling off. You know, because of what's happened recently. And you know, and there is, you know, just just there is help there for you. You know, calm. You know, I mean, you you know, there's there's a helpline there. You can get on it from five o'clock till midnight if you're having a little bit of a you know a, a bad time. Phone up is 0800 58 58 58. That's five o'clock till midnight. If you're having a little bit of trouble, you're having a little bit of a tough time, I promise you, you know, you, you don't have to sit there in silence. You don't have to be on your own. Phone this number and whatever's on your mind, get it off your chest. And then say what, you've got half, you've got half a chance of, of doing it then. Don't, uh, don't sit there and dwell. 
get on this outline, I said. And, um, yeah, 0800 yeah. 58, 58, 58. How did you pull yourself out of it, Ricky? <clears throat> or did you? Did you need the help of others? No, I... I, I, I um, it, it was very, very hard. I thought, you know, my, I, my son Campbell... And then my girlfriend at the time became became pregnant with my 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 first daughter Millie, and I thought, um, come on, Rick, it's not about you anymore. It's about your family. It's about your kids. You get yourself to, you know, together. And and I thought that would turn the corner on me. And even even my daughter being born couldn't do it for me. And I thought, well, listen, I, I'm I'm not going to be able to do this on my own. You know, if my daughter isn't isn't me my daughter who I love dearly, you know, is isn't getting me back on track, you know, I, I, I can't, I'm, it proves I can't do it on my own. So I went and saw um, a psychiatrist and went and saw him and he opened the door and fell on my knees and I put my arms around his legs and I just said, you need to tell me what to do here. You need to tell me what to do. I'm not going to be here next week. If you don't tell me what to do, I will go. I'll, I'll kill myself. I won't be here next week. And it was the best thing I ever did, you know, getting it off your chest and, you know, and sharing it, you know, you know, and it's hard for men, you know, you can't go in your local and say to the lads, can you, you know, I'm crying every day, I want to kill myself every day, so what do you do? You keep it inside, don't you? And it's the worst thing you can do. Go and speak to someone and get it off your, your chest. Is And, you know, and if I had have taken on my own life, I wouldn't have seen Campbell go professional, I wouldn't have been a, I wouldn't have been a granddad, I wouldn't have seen my granddaughter, I wouldn't have seen my daughters turning into the, to the lovely people, you know, lovely how, how kids. How did it got to that stage, Ricky? How did it got to that low stage well, what was the catalyst I think, I think it started with me whether I was down I was devastated and it was just like just in a mindset of highs and lows you know I got beat by Mayweather and everyone said well it's Floyd Mayweather there's no need to be embarrassed but I thought I was going to beat him and when I didn't I took it hard but then I decided I felt, felt like packing the game in and then I decided to carry on and then I boxed at the City of Manchester Stadium in front of 55,000 fans against Juan Lascano so that was a dream of me. I always wanted to fight at City Stadium. So mentally, I was back up then. Then shortly after that, then I fell out with Billy Graham, who was my, one of my, my trainer and one of my best trainer. friends. Yeah. yeah. So then I was I was down. I was devastated by that. But then what I, about your parents? There was a fallout there. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I fell out with um, then I, then I boxed Paulie Malinardi and Nolan Liam carried the belts in for me, and it's always like oh, I was up again. And then I got knocked out by Manny Pacquiao in two rounds. So mentally, I was down. And then I fell out with my mum and dad, and uh, I sat in my living room one day, and I just one afternoon and I sat there I thought well listen I've, I've got to retire now after that Pacquiao fight you know the, 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 my best days are behind me so I thought I've got no boxing uh, I've got no mum and dad no Billy Graham I was on my own at the time I was I was single I've got no no missus I thought what do I need to what do I need to be here for I've worked so hard you know what I mean and I, and I can't share it with my mum and dad I can't share it with Billy Graham I can't share it with the missus you know and I, I didn't care whether I lived or died and it was um it was horrific, horrific, horrific times. Tried killing myself several times and that. And I think when I look at my life today, you know, the things I've got to be so grateful, grateful for, you know, and, 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 and I, echo, I just say it again, you need to go and speak to someone. It doesn't matter. I could do anything in that boxing ring, but i tell you what, could I sort out my mental problems, what was going on between my ears? I couldn't. And I went and spoke to someone. And that's why I'm involved in, in things such as, you know the the calm charity and that because it's it's so important to me because I know I know there's people out there and if you are listening go and speak to someone please. Yeah, I think that's always uh, that's a message, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. If you need help, help is there. Absolutely, and you know you don't really, you know, God, God, you know I'm Rick Hatton. I was like a two weight world champion. I made Costi Zuko and his feet. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, and I I'm saying I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I needed help. And I tell you what, I I I'd love to turn the clock back, you know, fighting in Las Vegas again and naming there's only one Ricky Hatton and carrying world title belts, but that's been that's been and gone. But I'll be honest with you, um, Ricky Hatton has never been in a better place than what he is in pl present day. And I tell you what, and, and you know why that is? It's because I went and spoke spoke to someone and I got my life back on track.